All right, we're going to be working on a model here for uh, some Hot Wheels dioramas. And uh, we've got a couple of them here, but we'll be working on this drive-in in this video. So let's uh, get this thing open. So there's not much to this model, as you can see. There's your roof and maybe a couple of pieces of platform or sidewalk foundation. And, uh, yeah, not much at all. It doesn't feel like it was a... It did not feel like there was going to be a lot to this model because it was actually lightweight. As this one is very heavy. So I know there's going to be a lot of... Uh, this model here, by the way, is the cent uh, Centennial Mills. Mills. It's just a background building for a railroad layout, an HO railroad layout. But we're going to use these. We use these, my brother and I, and... For Hot Wheels diorama, so they actually look really cool. So let's get this thing open. Let's see what we got going here. Yep, there's that uh, foundation. Let's take some diner seats inside the diner. Windows, cardboard cutouts of Donnie's drive-in, uh, menu, instructions, and uh, yeah, this should be it. And we have a little tiny rod there. Not sure what that's for yet, so I haven't got that far. So let me get set up here and. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a one sheet instruction. Oh, here. The route is for the ball on top, I see. Uh, what is that ball? Is it something I have to create myself? I doubt it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So yeah, um, gotta decide what I'm gonna paint here because I'm not just just gonna leave this. That would be brutal. Now yeah, let me give this some thought. All right, got a quick follow up here. I got basically the interior done. It didn't take long. Just a lot of piece work, and I didn't paint any of it, and I don't plan to. Um, what I am painting, painting, our uh, roof tower that holds the signs, that'll be red. Um, the outdoor trim that sits near the ground, it's going to be painted. As you can see it was originally molded in that color. I primed it and gave it a little metallic green, a little more of the late 50s, early 60s look. And the outside window trims they were molded in gray, so I painted them silver that's gonna look good and what else oh this is the roof cap here it was molded in white so I painted it gray primer and then silver shot it so it'll sit like that and uh, as you can see you're not gonna really see inside this thing because there's also a roof that goes on here which I've already primed Prime this here. It was molded in that color. As you can see, molded plastic never really looks good. But uh, it'll look good once it's all done because you'll have these layers of color. Uh, let me see what I can fit here. And I think I'm going to go with a dark color on the roof, which will make the silver trim here stand out nicely. So, yeah, just got to keep moving on here. Uh, again, I don't know, maybe a dark brown or dark rustic red on that roof would look nice. I, but again, I haven't thought about it. I mean, I could go with the what the box suggests, but I rarely ever do. Because, you know, the roof is one of the biggest focal points. And I just don't think, I think I want to be different than the box, you know. I don't know. We'll see. I'll set that aside for now, and then uh, 
I'll continue plugging along here. See what I come up with. Alright, so I decided I'm going to dry brush my roof with this here. This is a burnt umber acrylic. And I think it's going to dry brush really nicely over that gray primer. Because our acrylic is very, very forgiving. I don't think I need much. And this is the color I'm going to go for on the sidewalk here that surrounds uh, the diner base. That is actually a sidewalk. So, uh, let me get to work here. And the art of dry brushing is actually quite simple. Let me grab a rag here. A rag or a paper towel. You know what? I'd rather have a little more substantial, like sock. Big old cotton sock. Okay, so get your brush all conditioned here. And then wipe. And then down. I'll do this in layers, take your time. And then, uh, everything else we can just, like these ribs here on the roof, we can come back with a paint marker, you know, and, uh, Couple layers like this, we will be all good. Just keep it moving. We're gonna work on this for a while and uh. Well, there's some benefits of dry brushing, too. Uh, when you brush paint, and if you're not careful, you put it on too heavy, what you run the risk of is seeing brush strokes, which is where airbrushes come in really handy. But for this one roof, I don't want to set up an airbrush and clean up an airbrush. It's just a roof. If I had a bigger project like a V-52 Flying Fortress in 148 scale, then yeah, I would be setting up a... An airbrush but I'm not so uh, this is a textured roof that's not supposed to look like anything more than a roof outside I ask you when was the last time you saw a shingled roof that anybody looked up and said wow does that look fantastic no because it's just functional it serves a purpose not many people go around admiring roofs but for this model the idea here is to make sure that it doesn't look like molded plastic. And uh, every little bit you do just makes it look that much better. So I'll work on this for a little bit here and then uh, come back with our, with our color. See?
paint pen. So yeah. That's all I'm doing to that. As you can see. It's coming along. Here's a quick update. This is about two and a half hours in. And uh, wow. Assembling the uh, window structure frames. And that, I have to say, was a bear. Uh, but uh, yeah. I think the worst of it is over right now. So, uh, moving on, I've got one complete empty tree, I think, there's two complete empty trees, I think we're about ready to get down to, we got two pieces left on that tree, right there and right there, four on that tree, so, yeah, wow, moving on. We are going to, uh, 37, I guess is a light. This is number 37 here. That will port right in. Oh, you know what that is? That is a, uh, vent. A vent for the restaurant there. So you see you got these tabs left on here. Technically, you should be cutting them off the tree with a knife, but, uh, I don't. I'll just clean them up afterwards here. All right. Let's get this little vent. As you see, I have a um, A little toothpick here to apply the glue because I don't need to make a big mess with a bunch of glue. There we are. All right, so there's that. It leaves us with number 33 here, and I will just take that off right now to discard this tree. Now I will use my knife to get it off. The sprue, I think that's the technical term for one of those. All right. Uh, let's see here. Where is it supposed to go? I don't know. Hmm. Let me flip this back over. Where's number 33 go? Not seeing it. There's thirty two. I'm not seeing thirty three. That's bizarre. All right, well, move on. All right, I'll give you an update in a couple minutes. All right, we got our roof on. That was actually the simplest part of this whole build so far. So yeah, now we have to assemble um, our stack, sign, whatever they're calling it. So we will do that. I don't know if I want to paint this or leave it white. I think I've got a lot going on here because i got some red going on and some green and some signage. I think I'll leave that white. Maybe I'm getting a little lazy, but I think it's going to look good when it's white. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, we're going to do some water slides here. I have them cut out here. It's basically their menu that's going to go across the top of their fascia there, right below the roof. And uh, start this off with a short one here that says cheeseburgers and onion rings. Just water slides down in here. That's just a tepid, lukewarm water. You don't want to leave them in there too long. Because uh, they'll probably disintegrate the. Um, let's see if that's it. No, not quite yet. You are going to need the aid of your little hobby knife here. Because um, they actually come in handy when you're doing water slides. 
All right, let's see here. Yep, we're loose now. All right, so let's uh, slide this guy off here. So, you can sit there, onion rings. Rings. Let me get this off here with a knife. This is what I'm talking about. Onion rings. All right. There's one. Let's see what we're talking about here. Put you in the movie there. All right. We're going to go around the whole diner and then uh, we'll be back. Yeah, these uh, decals not going so uh, well for me. They're falling apart. And I just checked the date on the box. They've been in that box since 2002. If anybody knows anything about models, which I think I have uh, built my fair share of models, the longer a decal sits inside a box, the harder it is to water slide it off. Now, I've tried several uh, different uh, ways here by putting it in there and letting it sit. Now, then I just drug it across the water and pulled it out, and they're still falling apart, which tells me. That the glue that actually made these is uh, just about done. Jeez. Christ. I'm going to try this water slide here. Nope. It's still falling apart. It's horrible. Wow, is that horrible? Not going to work out for me. Oh, well. Come on. Oh, that's it. Yeah, done. Clean up my area. We'll take a few photos. All right, guys. What we're going to do is we're going to put some Hot Wheels around here. And uh, this is the idea. Why don't we take this guy right here? This gorgeous Hot Wheel. Set it up like so. And how about uh, this guy right here? We'll set that up like that. And how about, oh, how about the shoe box? Set that up like that. And how about Purple Passion done in Chrome? And uh, how about, you know what? What else do we want? You know what? How about this 57 T Bird? A lot of red cars here. You noticing a trend here? So let's see if we can get something different other than red. How about. This heavy Chevy there. We'll call it a heavy Chevy. I think it's just a Camaro. One of my favorites. Come out here with the um, bone shaker. Sitting there like so. What else do we want? We want a Corvette. No, let's go all sparkly. All sparkly like this. Wow, a lot of red cars. We need something other than red. How about one of these guys? How about we pull these guys out? Let's break up some of that red shoebox out. This guy, this guy needs to be polished up a little bit. There's that guy. How about GTO? GTO sound good? Antichio sounds really good. Uh, da, 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 da. 
about this purple. Still wearing a lot of red. You know. Red in. Shoebox. I don't want the shoe. I don't like the shoebox, but I'm looking for different colors here. Oh, here we go. How about this green one? Huh? Cougar. Why don't we slide out this big monster and put this green one in here to break that up? That guy back over here like this. And uh, we'll have the uh, couple on the outside there. And then we'll go have a look. Oh, you know what? I got a Mustang. Oh, another red Mustang. <laughs> yeah, it's enough red. Now, we got quite a few cars here. But uh, let me take you off of uh, this platform and we'll go around and we'll have a look. All right. Now, let's get down here and have ourselves a look here. This is the idea. He sells a lot of Hot Wheels on eBay. And it's nice to have a little scene that you can actually put the Hot Wheel in. Going around here. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so. Hey, thanks for coming along with me on this model build. And I will be building this guy, not for Hot Rods, but for beat up cars like that right there because that is a more of an industrial type setting and uh, it's nice to have these buildings when you're doing photo shoots of Hot Wheels of all states so states meaning conditions so yeah hey guys thanks for watching my videos I'm gonna whip out